Hello, my name is Rob Reynolds. Welcome to College Algebra Section 3.4. Today we're going to be looking at piecewise functions. And piecewise functions mean that you have a maybe a piece of a function here. It's a linear function, another piece, a quadratic, and then a third piece function um, somewhere else. Remember, when all said and done on piecewise functions, though, it has to pass the vertical line test. It needs to be a function. You may not have a parabola and then a line segment within the same, because that doesn't pass a vertical line test. All right, but before we begin, I wanted to back up on section uh, 3.3. We were talking about even, odd, or neither. Just do a quick little review again. Remember, if a function is even, then if I replace x with negative x, I should get the same function back. Uh, if I have an odd function that, and replace x with negative x, then I should get uh, the opposite function. Just remember the 3L rule, odd, opposite, and has symmetry about the origin. So let's do that. Let's test for symmetry by replacing this x with negative x. Uh, and I'll get negative x cubed minus negative x over negative x cubed plus negative x. And at first glance, it looks like it's going to be odd because it's going to be opposite. But uh, we, better, we better look at this because I think there's a trick in here. This uh, term is negative x cubed plus x. And so far, that's why I said A. It's kind of looking like it's opposite because this whole numerator this is a positive, this is a negative, this is a negative, this is, that looks like opposite. But if I look in the denominator, uh, I also have some oppositeness heading on. So if I have a negative in the numerator, which I can factor out, and a negative in the denominator, which I can factor out, then I can cancel those negative ones. And what that leaves me with is x cubed minus x and x cubed plus x, which is actually the same so this is not an odd function. This is actually the same, which means it's an even function. So I wanted to show that to you. Here's how the book worked that out. Here we go. Piecewise functions. Uh, piecewise functions, this uh, is important for you to know the shape of the function, because uh, piecewise functions oftentimes have like a square root function here, and then maybe an absolute value function somewhere else. And just for you to know the shape of these things is important. So this is called the square root function. This is called the cube root function here. And it goes off in off, uh, both directions because you can actually take the cube root of a negative 8 uh, and get a number. Uh, unlike over here, if you were to try to take the square root of negative 8, it should be undefined. So that's why there's no values over here cube roots go in both directions. Uh, absolute value functions kind of look like linears. They, they form a nice V. Uh, you can remember that for value, uh, absolute value functions, uh, and they form the letter V, absolute value functions. So I play in class a little Simon Says game. Uh, we play, we do some hand gestures. Uh, just naming these functions a constant function. I would make my students in class draw their hands and show what it looks like. Uh, y equals x is called the identity because for every x, uh, there's a y that's the same, so it's 0.33. So x identifies with y, it's equivalent. The square root, uh, excuse me, the square function is the parabola. Uh, the cube function, you should recognize again playing with your hands if you're playing along with Simon Says. The square root function, if you get your whole body into these things, sometimes it's easier to remember what these functions look like. They look like this. I call this walk like an Egyptian. So you kind of get your whole body in here and kind of walk like an Egyptian with your hands going in opposite directions. Notice, careful though, the cube root function is a little bit different than uh, x cubed. For x cubed, your hand should be facing up and down. Those are the ending behaviors in here. So this forms that S shape. This also forms an S, but your hand should be facing out to the left and to the right, walking like an Egyptian. Uh, this sometimes I call the John Travolta because we swoop, uh, swoop, start up high, swoop out, and start down low and swoop. So uh, hyperbolic function. Uh, I already talked about absolute value functions. V for victory, V valley. Sorry, my kids went to Valley Catholic. Uh, the greatest integer function is probably new to most of you. Um, it says, um, I need the greatest integer less than or equal to 
the x value. So for example, if x was 1 fourth, the greatest integer less than 1 fourth is 0. The greatest integer less than or equal to 1 half is also 0. And the greatest integer less, so all those values between 0 and 1 are going to be 0. Because the greatest integer less than or equal to, all of these numbers in between 0 and 1 is 0. And then I continue doing this. Sometimes it's called the step function. Closed dots on the left, closed on the right. You can graph this on your calculator. Um, I believe it's under math num 5. You can explore with that. Um, again, graphing some piecewise functions. I'm going to suggest that you take this negative 1, and let's find out uh, where we know this is a linear function here. So I'm going to graph this line. Uh, I Instead of starting at 1 and then doing my slope down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1, and drawing in that entire line, I'm going to try to find out a start value. And the start value for this thing says plug in this negative 1 here so I can find y. So it's the opposite of negative 1 plus 1. So this is 1 plus 1, or y should equal 2. So I know I have a, a start value here at negative 1, comma, 2. And it's going to be a closed dot because it's equal to it. So I'm going to go to negative 1, 2 and put a closed dot at that point. And I'll repeat the process for positive 1. But notice I'm going to have an open dot here. So negative 1 plus 1 is 0. So open dot at 1, comma, 0. And I'm going to draw in that line. So that little piece of the function is the first piece uh, that I draw. The second piece function, piecewise function, is uh, y equals 2. But I can't graph in that entire line, y equals 2. I can only graph in uh, y equals 2 for those values of x that are 1. Well, if x is 1, then of course y is 2, because y is always 2. So I have a little point right here. And that's my second piece of the function. Notice I'm still passing the vertical line test. I have not violated anything. Uh, for every x, there's still just one y. So when all said and done, uh, this these are functions, and they should pass so, uh, the vertical line test. So I'm going to graph this last one now. It says y equals x squared. But again, don't graph this entire function in y equals x squared. Only graph in for those values of x that are greater than 1. So again, let's plug in a 1 and find out a start value. It's going to be an open dot. And the open dot is at 1. 1 squared is 1. So put an open dot at 1, 1. Good thing it's open because I already have another piece of the function here. And uh, I know it's a parabola, so it's going to be facing. If you want to find additional points, keep plugging and chugging. But basically, um, there is the third piece of the function. And that passes the vertical line test. So that was your first look. Here's the author's rendition of this. It looks a little bit better than mine. Um, but you can see he's got all three pieces of the function. For sake of time, I'll skip that. For sake of time, this is out of your book, too. Again, you should be able to identify these very quickly, all of these functions. Let's try another piecewise function. Uh, this is y equals x squared for um, those values of x that are less than 0. So I plug in a 0. 0 squared is 0, and put an open dot at 0, 0, and graph in those values that of x get less than. So you could try, like, if you throw in a negative 1, negative 1 squared is positive 1. If you throw in a negative 2, Negative 2 squared is this 4, so 1, 2, 3, 4. And you can see this function. It's a parabola. Then I'm going to graph the line at the point y equals 2. So if x is 0, y is 2, and that's an equal, so I'm going to close the dot at 0, 2. And then the third piece of the function is another line, and it's starting uh, for all those values of x. So let's throw in a 0 here. 2 times 0 is 0, plus 1. It's an open dot at 0, 1. Open dot at 0, 1. And it's a linear function with slope of rise to run 1. And it's a linear, linear form. Oh, no, yeah. So I got a line, I have a dot, and I have a parabola. So that's a good, good final answer. This one, again, just identifying I should have a linear function and uh, a cubed function. This, graphs uh, y equals uh, x cubed, so you can practice uh, that. This is the greatest inner function. See what happens if you throw a 2 out front versus a 2 inside. Um, and then there's some extra problems that you can practice. This one is the, again, you should just kind of know the general shapes of these things. This is called the hyperbolic function, or reciprocal function here. 
this is what it looks like. And then for the uh, cube root of x, uh, this is that walk like an Egyptian uh, heading off in both directions. But you don't graph for all those values. You only graph for those values that uh, are restricted to domain. This is absolute value, v for victory, v valley. And this is a x cubed function. I'll graph one here. This says, again, plug in the negative 2. So if you let x be negative 2, the y value, the absolute value of negative 2 is 2. And I'm going to have a closed dot there. So I'll go negative 2, 2, close the dots. Let's plug in a 0. 0, comma, the absolute value of 0 is 0. And this time it's going to be an open dot because it's not equal to it. So open dot here. And it's a v for victory, v valley. So I know I have just that little piece um, of the function. I can't draw on the other piece of the d. So it looks just like a linear function. But it's, I'm just looking at um, the left side of this. Then I'm going to look at the cube function, but it's only for those values of x that get greater. And I, I, again, I have an open dot here. So I'm going to go over 1, up 1, over 2. 2 cubed is 8. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I missed it a little bit. So there's the rest of the function. So that's what that looks like. And oh, this is important. Um, let's do number uh, 42 where uh, I'm asking you to go backwards. I'm going to give you an equation and ask you to, uh, or I'm going to give you a graph and ask you to write for me the piecewise function. So the piecewise function here, it looks like we have a linear function, but it's not for all those values of y equals, let's see, what does y equal? Oh, right there, y equals 1. So I can't say uh, this is my y. I remember f of x is y. So y equals 1, but y equals 1 only for those values between 0 and 2. So I'll say I need x between 0 and 2, and it looks like I can have an open dot at 0, but a closed dot at 2, so I will say it could be equal to it. Then I'm going to try to graph uh, this piece of the function, and I'll write that in. This looks like a linear function. I could just write it out. Uh, y equals mx plus b. It looks like the y-intercept is a 0. It looks like the slope is rise 1, run 1. So I, I, oh, that looks just like the line y equals x. So I'll say there's the line y equals x, but it's only good for those x values between negative 1 and 0. And it looks like, uh, I've messed up my graph, so I can't even tell if it's an open or closed dot there. Closed dot at both. So equals and equals. So I hope that's helpful for you uh, to begin piecewise functions.